do staircases the hand and the brain have in common? Stay with me and find out. Hi, I'm Bimi or Coach G as my clients like to call me. Today, I'm going to simplify our body's most complex organ, the brain. And I promise you'll have a whole new perspective by the time we're done. For something that controls just about everything we do, the brain is a body part we don't know enough about which is limiting our understanding of ourselves and others and potentially affecting our relationships. Picture this. If you knew what was going on with your brain as you felt energy rushing through your body, the anger building up after something was said or done to you, you're more likely to choose a helpful response instead of one you might regret later. Or if you observe a child throwing a tantrum, you're empowered to manage your emotions and guide the child far more effective than responding with your own adult sized tantrum. So the brain can be divided into two major parts, cortical and subcortical, or according to Dr. Daniel Siegel, a brilliant neuroscientist who simplified this upstairs and downstairs brain. Imagine your closed fist as a symbol for your brain. Now picture it divided into two levels, cortical, which is the upstairs, which is made up of the cerebral cortex and its various parts, and then subcortical, downstairs, also called the reptilian or lizard brain, made up of the brain stem, the limbic region, and the amygdala. If we liken this setup to a house, downstairs is for essential functions like emotions, automatic body responses, and survival instincts. Upstairs, the executive function suite is for problem solving, planning, and decision making. This part, unlike the downstairs brain, keeps developing until our late 20s and is continually under construction with parts unfinished, like a house with ongoing renovations, a missing roof, debris lying around. Sounds chaotic. Yeah, a lot of our internal systems can be like that but simplifying it so you can know what's really going on and know how to handle things differently for better outcomes is why I do what I do. So welcome to a less chaotic existence. For optimal functioning, both brain parts must collaborate, much like needing a staircase to move between the floors of the house. This mental staircase allows integration, ensuring we use the entire brain rather than being stuck downstairs in a reactive state during moments of intense emotion and stress. A strong staircase enables our upstairs brain to oversee downstairs brain actions, calming intense emotions and impulsive reaction. Using our whole brain means we're aware of the cues from downstairs and we use the upstairs brain for decision making. If you found yourself regretting impulsive behavior, you're losing control over your emotions or blaming others for your actions, perhaps it's time to learn emotional regulation. In part two, I'll talk some more about the staircase and how to strengthen it. I'll also explain how flipping the lid disconnects our upstairs brain and how to bring it back online. So we're using our whole brain and making choices that serve our goals. If you're eager, to explore more ways to improve your mental and emotional health, follow me as I simplify the complex science so you can apply it to your life today. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next episode.